Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. And today we are back in the dynamic weather script and we're going to work on optimization. But before we do, I'm just going to downsize my node develop. Now, a little word of warning, as you can see, I've upgraded to Unity 5.5 here. Now, while I f found that the dynamic weather script was absolutely fine after the upgrade, I did have to re-import some of my standard assets. So if you're getting errors on the console, this is maybe is what you will have to do. So with that said, let's come back to the script. And the first thing we're going to work on is optimizing here and we'll use the sunny weather as example where we set or adjust the light intensity now the first way of optimizing it is we're getting the component of light each time and this is unnecessary I like to do this in my scripts originally um, because these are tutorials for people to learn and I think going over the basics of how to get each type of components good but now we have a fully working script and you've all spent time probably altering and adapting the scripts yourselves we can go ahead and begin optimization so the first thing I'm going to do is come to my variables up at the top and I am looking for this block here where we set the intensity values and I'm going to come up to the top now this one can be of type private can be of type light with a capital L and let's just call this underscore sunlight and we'll put it into the comments um, creates naming convention for light this is so we can actually access the light on our game object. Our game object is the directional light. That's where we have the script attached. And this is the light we want to reference. So now we have that variable in place, we'll come to the void start. And I'm going to come here where we get the game objects. You can put yours anywhere you like, but I'm going to put mine here. And we'll use that new naming convention, sunlight. And it's going to be equal to get component open bracket of type light with a capital L again. Close bracket, open and close, and close the line off. Straight into the comments. Sunlight variable is equal to our light you can uh, with your comments any way you like but basically all we're doing is saying this naming convention now is equal to and then we get the light component which is this light here so now we have that in place let's use this naming convention so I'm going to copy it and let's come all the way down to the sunny weather and what we can do is we'll highlight all of this get component light and the open and close brackets and we'll paste that naming convention in bring the comment back into line so now we are using that naming convention for this this part of the code so every time we use that naming convention, we're getting the light component. And of course, we still want to get the intensity value. Now you must remember to leave the dot in place between sunlight and intensity. Otherwise, the script will not work. And we'll go ahead and we'll do the same for the other three lines uh, we'll paste that in there so now our two if blocks are altered 
and we'll bring the comments back into line. But now we have another problem. When we enter the sunny state, these four lines of code are running all the time. And this is unnecessary. Basically, we don't need these lines running um, once we actually hit the intensity value. Now, if we use the return statement somewhere up here, created another if block, it could affect the rest of the script, i.e. the rest, things like the audio components not being read, and we don't want that. So, the uh, way to do it is we're going to come here. Now, you can put these blocks anywhere you like in the script if you want, and I know some of you may prefer to leave them at the bottom of the script here, and that's absolutely fine. It won't make a difference to how the script works but I'm going to put mine right below the applicable state so in this case it's the sunny state and we'll create a void and we'll give it a naming convention let's say sunny light manager open and close brackets will open and close again we'll come inside and as always we'll copy the debug log we'll paste that in and we'll just switch out the naming convention for the log to the name of our void. And now we have that in place, I'll enter again there, we'll come and these four lines here we can select both of these if blocks and we'll cut and we'll paste those in there. Now where we've cut them out we'll come inside and we'll actually call that function sunny light manager we'll open and close we'll close the line off into the comments call sunny light manager function and then we'll come to the new void we'll enter again now this must be put at the very top just below the debug log it must be here and the first thing we're going to do is let's copy this first line here this if line we'll paste that in but we're going to change it and we'll say if sunlight intensity rather than using the greater than we'll say double equals and we'll change the comment so if light intensity let's alter all this comment and we'll say is equal to sunny intensity. We'll come to the line below, return, close the line off, and then as we always do, we'll say then do nothing and return. And we'll enter there. And we'll save that off. So when we enter the sunny state, we call this function. These four lines become active while the sunlight is adjusted until it hits the sunny intensity value. Once it does hit that with this line of code here, it will return. Now this void will still be running, however, because of the return statement these four lines of code will no longer be read. So in this video we've actually got two pieces of optimization. We're only needing to get the component once now here and we're also moving things out in this case the light to its separate function and we're saying look when we hit the correct value then don't bother reading any more unnecessary lines and uh, let's make sure that's saved and we'll downsize mono develop and we'll go and test it out so we'll come to console we'll wait for the script to recompile and then we'll hit play so let's clear that off so i actually want to collapse those down so we're in sunny now which is good Let's change the switch weather timer up to a big value so we remain. 
we've gone into Thunder now, let's just keep going and we'll come back to Sunny. And unfortunately it may take a few attempts to get back to the Sunny value. This is always the problem with randomised weather. Hopefully, here we go, we're back in Sunny. So we're in Sunny, and let's decrease the light. Now as you can see, the intensity is creeping up as it should. It should stop when it hits 1, which it has done. Let's set it above 1, and it will come back down. And when it hits 1 again, it will stop. Now as I said, the void is still running. But if we come back to the script, it's these four lines now which are no longer being read. Great way of optimization. And I'll just pause that there while I just explain something. Now, doing it this way does mean we don't get a perfect value of exactly one. But we get so close to it that in real terms it makes no difference. As you can see, the value is 1.00162. So unbelievably close to one. You'll get a slightly different value each time, but again, it'll be really, really close. Let's do it again. Pause that there. And as you can see, we've got a value of one, but it's point, and this time treble zero and some other numbers. So it's so close to one, you'll never actually see the difference in game. So it won't make a difference in the visuals of the game, but, however, this will make a difference in, or a very big difference in terms of optimization. Once, especially once we actually uh, finish the rest of the optimization for the script. And we'll be doing that in the next video, because I think we'll leave it here for now. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you next time. And until then, as always... Bye for now.